What did this season reveal or prove to you about the 49ers? It was very interesting. They had this great win streak, but then they, they didn't get any further than they got the season before. So it's it was very interesting what happened. What's your takeaway? Uh, I think my takeaway is that Brock Purdy proved that the 49ers always needed a quarterback upgrade, number one. Yeah. I think that yeah. that was evident again. Like that's why I was down on the McCaffrey trade. I was like, "Yeah, it's great. He's great, but it's like, is he? Does he play quarterback? No. Okay. Well, you're not going to the Super Bowl. Like, but, yeah. I think of all the changes, like McCaffrey change. McCaffrey was like a great change that they needed, but that 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 thing only helped them. That pretty much saved them in the Rams game, right? And only like probably carried them like a couple other games before Brock Purdy took over. But really, the biggest leap that really helped this offense was Brock Purdy. Yeah, that became evident. I mean, yeah. the stats are already there. Like he averaged more than a touch, about a touchdown more than with Garoppolo in the game, and that's including when McCaffrey took over. Like I see stats like, look at the offense before McCaffrey got there versus after, and it's like, yeah, we'll also consider that until Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt, or even the ones that Jimmy Garoppolo played with McCaffrey, and then versus with Purdy. Purdy ultimately was the one who took them to another level because. You don't want one player doing everything on your offense, which is what McCaffrey was pretty much doing initially when, with Garoppolo. Whereas Purdy, it's like, okay, McCaffrey doesn't have to do everything. Suddenly, Kittle's alive. You know, Ayuk getting a couple targets, a couple catches a game. Debo a little sprinkle. Juwan Jennings. It's like, wow, it's like an actually utilized, fully utilized offense. And a guy who there's pressure in his face, he's not afraid of it, and he can move away from it, and he can take the shots deep. And it was just like... Where has this been? <laughs> it, it, it literally, when the offense, when I'm, when you, when you go from a Kyle Shannon offense that's a run first, that's run to oriented, and you see like, whoa, passing a, an explosive passing attack, that says it all right there. So to me, that proves all the times like this is what this is what led them to drafting Trey Lance. It wasn't just because of the oh Jimmy gets hurt all the time. That's why we got a new quarterback. No, that's not why. That's twenty five percent of the reason why. He wasn't the good. The other seventy five percent of the reason why is because you're tired of that tote of that tap dancing handsome guy in the pocket who doesn't take the shots deep, who crumbles like a cookie. Yes, who does that? Who claps like the monkey with the symbols, like that stuffed animal one? Who just does that? Because then that that literally will let it to Lance. Now I know it's not Lance that's the example, but either whether it was him or Purdy doesn't matter. The point is, this is the example we always needed, and it's proof. It's proof to all the Jimmy G stands. Like, look, this is what it's supposed to look like, guys. An actual competent offense, and that's why they scored over thirty points every game except for the Cowboys game, and wait, and the Seahawks game on uh, Thursday night, and the Philly game. But he got hurt. He didn't play that game. So yeah, he got hurt. <clears throat> that's a good call. I mean, Brock Purdy really. Uh, that was illuminating what he showed. Also on defense, I think just in general, we we thought the Niners had like the best D line in the league. People were talking it was like the best the best D line they've ever had. Like, felt nah, is I mean Bosa's is great, um, but he has very little help. Armstead missed most of the season. Kinlaw's been hurt for two years. Ebukam was hurt all year. Many Hughes decent. Uh, they need to. I mean, you compare their D line to Phillies, it's like oh, not even not, not even close. So yeah, it's great that you have Nick Bosa, but that's just a, you're not done on the D line. Good D, good run defense, but the pass rush just fell apart, and it just seemed like when you the Niners still t still tell themselves that they're the best team in the league, but not in the trenches, not even close, man. Philly just right there punked you, and I think the Niners need to um, make some serious strides there. To, to back up what they say about themselves that they're the best team in the league. This is why, this is why uh, I like that ESPN pa team pass rush w win rate. This is why I think it actually comes true. It's like the Niners weren't top 10 in that. The Eagles mm -hmm. and the Cowboys were tied at number one. And right. it showed, right? It showed in that in that game where it was like rough. And it definitely showed when Brock Purdy got hurt and Josh Johnson was running for his freaking life and everything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and even if you don't want to believe in that, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out Micah Parsons, DeMarcus, oh my God, like in the interior. Yeah. And then you, the Eagles, you can you can literally list every player on the Eagles defensive line, and everyone has been a Pro Bowl and All Pro at one point in life. That's insanity. That's crazy. That's That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. This is almost which I can't wait to preview the Super Bowl. It's like this is almost reminding me. I'm like, oh my god, it's Mahomes against the Bucks 2.0 again. Only this yeah. time he has an offensive line. So it's like the Niners almost didn't stand a chance because outside of like left tackle, it's like who was really who was really going to stop these guys for like a whole drive? It really needed to be a lot of just like quick of quick operation. So I think. Yeah, it's kind of funny how Niners preach about offensive, you know, the, the trenches, especially defensive line. It's like it's really just Bosa. Because even if Armstead was healthy and was playing like 2019 version of Armstead, it's still not enough. It's not. It's not. And on the offensive line, it's the same thing. You got Trent Williams, and then 
you know, guys who are bargains and some guys are, are worth the money and some guys aren't. Uh, but it's like, I, I don't like that philosophy. Just have the highest paid DN, the highest paid left tackle, and then just fill in the rest. Like those are units. I, I, I like the Philly approach where you have a bunch of a, a minus players and not just one, a plus and a bunch of C minus players. So, I mean, this is, a, this is a, a architectural decision the Niners have to make with their roster. And they're going to give all the money to Nick Bosa. They are. I get it. But this is it's, this, pro, this problem is only going to become worse unless you start hitting on a bunch of draft picks and you don't even have draft picks. Drake Jackson has to hit. It has to. It has because, to. Because already so far, I mean, we didn't talk about it, but, you know, Kinlaw's not getting picked up. He's pretty much kind of a whiff at this point. And there's no way you're going to pay him that $10.3 million. Even nothing. if he works out, he's a run defender. He's not a pass rusher. Yeah, because he's such a tank. But other than him, like, you really need the Drake Jackson one to hit so yep. badly. You needed him to hit so badly. And he looked decent the first half of the year. Okay, like, okay there's some strides. And I think this is why that, I remember by week we had that show where, like, who we expected to turn it up or really present themselves. I think I said Drake Jackson first. You were in agreement. It went a different way just for the show purposes. But it's like, wow, this guy really fell off. And so when Kyle mm-hmm. Shannon says, like, yeah, he ran out of gas and strength. And it's like that the whole season is like, you know what? It's not – it's not un- it's not a typical it's not, you know it's not uncommon to see that because what do these guys play like 10 12 college games a year yeah and, and also like, he's still 21 he hasn't even turned 22 yet he's like the youngest player in the team so, so he's like, he could definitely needs to get, get more like yeah. you know me really more he really needs to hit he needs to be the d4 2019 well okay that's a little too high 2019 d4 is pretty good um but if you can get close to that that'll do that automatically do enough wonders and then you probably still want to add someone free agency or draft or draft some. I, I wonder if all this time, like the Niners have really depreciated in defensive line strength, is because they're kind of taking, not for granted, Chris Kasarik, but they're kind of using him too much or trying to like just trying to, oh, we got Chris Kasarik, we're Gucci. You know, that's why Arden Key walked because of the, the, the work he did in 2020 and then last year with Arden Key and all these players because, you know, their platoon system last year was tremendous. And this year, you know, there was, you know, kind of was a kind of one off. I mean, Amena, who was probably was arguably the second best pass rusher. After that, who else? The way I look at Drake Jackson is that he's going to be used the way Amenahu was used. 275-pound defensive end who probably rushes from the interior on third down. That's the way I think they're going to use him. They need a D. Ford type. D. Ford was like 250. He had the great get-off, and he would be the first guy in the in the backfield. Even if he missed and just got pressure, then Armstead would, would, would finish it, or Bosa would finish it. That's how they did it in 2019. They don't have that guy. Ebukam's not that guy. If they just could get a guy with a good get off who weigh, who's a speed edge rusher, that's not Drake Jackson. A, a a someone who's more explosive than than Bosa, smaller than Bosa. We were thinking that would be Kamoko Ture. No 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 no. Could you get that guy? That would really help. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. it was going to be Kamoko, wasn't it? I remember because yeah. he did have like those flash. It was like, oh, let's see how he's going to do, especially under Kasarik and you good know. Athlete. But, all that talent, and then he never even yeah. got to shine, which is like, damn, if he didn't get to shine, that means Kasarik was like out on him then. I, if you could per- get the D Ford type, it would make Drake Jackson better. It would make Nick Bosa and Armstead better. I think if there's one coach who, like, if there's, like, oh, this guy didn't make it at any position or any offside of the ball, it's, like, if the defensive line doesn't make it, it's, like, I trust Kasarik more than, like, someone like a Kyle Shanahan. Like, it's, yeah. like, okay, you're not giving Brandon Ayuk chances. I don't trust you. It's, like, okay, like, Tamiko Ture didn't make it, then, okay. Chris no, Kasarik, I, I, I wouldn't question that. I wouldn't question that. No, he's – yeah, I mean, Ture hasn't ever really done much. 